So Nvidia have launched their much anticipated GeForce 30 series graphics cards, meaning there's even more choice on the market. So we thought it was a good idea to update our buyer's guide for you, helping you to understand the differences in the Nvidia GeForce GPU range and hopefully give you an idea of what may be the best choice for you. We have tech spec videos over on our YouTube channel for the RTX 3080 card and soon the 3090 and 3070. So make sure you check out those for an in-depth look at the performance of these latest gen cards against the previous gen. Now, some modern processors are equipped with integrated graphics, but they're usually only suitable for basic tasks such as web browsing and office applications. So for you gamers and video editors, and those with a heavier graphical workload, you really do need to consider a graphics card up to the task. The more powerful a GPU, then the more cores and memory it'll have, enabling your PC to run games at higher quality settings at a smooth frame rate and allow you to take advantage of super sharp high resolution monitors, making everything just look better. And with prices ranging from around £1,500 down to as little as £130, there's an NVIDIA GeForce GPU for every gamer. The range is divided into two product groups, GeForce RTX and GeForce GTX, each with their own set of features and benefits, which we'll explain in the next section. To make the selection process a little easier to understand, we've also divided all the GPUs into four main categories in descending performance, ultra high-end, high-end, mid-range and entry-level. Now, there's no doubt that the most powerful and advanced NVIDIA gaming graphics cards belong to the GeForce RTX 30 series. The range comprises close to a dozen models spanning all the way from mid-range GPUs costing hundreds of pounds all the way up to ultra high-end GPUs that cost over a thousand pounds. GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs are based on the Ampere architecture. Launched in autumn 2020, Ampere enables real-time ray trace graphics in games. Unlike traditional rasterized graphics, ray tracing simulates how light beams and shadows actually work, providing far more rich and realistic graphics. Whilst ray tracing as a technique has been used for decades in pre-rendered films, what makes Ampere GPUs unique is that they're powerful enough to produce ray trace graphics in real time. The RTX 3090 is Nvidia's most powerful gaming graphics card. This ultra-fast graphics card now sits alone in our ultra-high-end category, as it packs in 10,496 CUDA cores and 24 gigabytes of memory, providing stunning gaming experiences at the most demanding resolutions, 8K, 4K and UWQHD. The RTX 3080 is the second most powerful GeForce 30 series gaming graphics card. This ultra-fast graphics card packs in 8,704 CUDA cores and 10GB of memory, providing stunning gaming experiences at 4K and UWQHD. And the RTX 3070 is the third most powerful GeForce 30 series card, packing in 5,888 CUDA cores and 8GB of memory, and providing stunning gaming experiences at 4K and UWQHD. Now, moving on to the previous generation of NVIDIA GPUs, the 20 series, which were the first to take the RTX name, meaning they're based on the Turing architecture, which supports the same features as Ampere, but have less performance. The Titan RTX is the flagship GeForce 20 series gaming graphics card. This ultra-fast card packs in 4,608 CUDA cores, 72 RT cores and 24 gigabytes of memory and provides stunning gaming experiences at 4K and UWQHD. We don't recommend this one for you though if you just play games as really it's meant for more professional use and so it costs significantly more than anything else for only minor gaming performance increases. Also sitting in the high-end space of the 20 series is the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, costing significantly less than the Titan, but offering almost the same performance in gaming. It packs in 4,352 CUDA, 544 Tensor and 68 RT cores, with 11 gigabytes of memory and supporting real-time ray tracing that makes games look truly stunning for a great gaming experience at 4K and UWQHD. The RTX 2080 Super is the next best performing high-end GeForce 20 series graphics card. 
This powerful graphics card packs in 3072 CUDA cores, 48 RT cores and 8 gigabytes of memory and provides a great gaming experience at 4K and UWQHD, although you will need to consider dropping the resolution to 1440p in ray traced games. Then we have the RTX 2070 range, which consists of the 2070 and the 2070 Super, the Super being the more powerful of the two. Both cards supports all the Turing features and comes with 8GB of memory, but the Super increases the core count from 2,304 to 2,560, plus 320 Tensor and 40 RT cores, giving a bit more performance at a similar price and making it a great choice for gaming at 1440p. Then we move on to the mid-range of NVIDIA GPUs. The RTX 2060 Super is the next model down, with 2,176 CUDA cores, 34 RT cores and 8 gigabytes of memory, and it'll still provide you with a great gaming experience at 1440p. Whilst the older RTX 2060 packs in fewer cores and less memory, this is still a good choice for gaming at 1440p, but you'll need to drop the resolution to 1080p in ray traced games. Still in the mid-range category, we now move down to the GeForce GTX 16 series cards. These are based on a cut-down version of the Turing architecture, which means they share the same great power efficiency as the GeForce RTX cards, but they lack the RT core, so they don't support DXR ray tracing or some of the other features from DirectX 12 Ultimate. That said, GeForce GTX graphics cards are excellent value for money thanks to their competitive pricing and some of the more powerful models are even powerful enough to use in VR. The GTX 1660 Ti packs in 1536 CUDA cores and 6GB of memory for a great gaming experience at 1440p. Then we have the 1660 Super, which is the most affordable mid-range NVIDIA GeForce graphics card and thanks to its 1408 CUDA cores and 6GB of memory, it still packs in quite a punch when gaming at 1440p. The NVIDIA entry-level GTX cards are the 1650 Super with 1,280 CUDA cores and 4GB of memory, providing a great gaming experience at 1080p. And the 1650 with slightly less power is the most affordable NVIDIA gaming graphics card, but with 896 CUDA cores and 4GB of memory, it still provides a good gaming experience at 1080p. It's very difficult to advise on the right card for you without knowing your use case and games that you play or are hoping to play with your new card. But to summarise, this table shows you using marks out of 10 each card's performance capabilities in general gaming. If ray tracing is something that you need in your next graphics card, then you will need to be looking at an RTX card. And to future-proof your system for PCIe 4, the latest Ampere 30 series are the best choice for you. If, however, ray tracing and PCIe 4 is not too important to you, then you can still benefit from one of the GTX cards. These cards offer excellent performance in traditional game rendering and also tend to offer the best performance per pound as they don't feature Tensor or RT cores. And once you've narrowed down your GPU choice, it's also good to note that each manufacturer will also offer some unique features to these cars, such as boosted clock speeds and RGB lighting. Scan sells a full range of all the cars mentioned, so be sure to have a good look through the website, and you can also make use of our really helpful comparison tool to see the specs side by side. There's also an online version of this buyer's guide should you want to revert back to any of the information. And of course, Scan are always on hand to answer any of your questions about which card is right for you. So feel free to contact the team, or if you'd prefer us to do the hard work for you, then why not choose a pre-built system? You can check out our wide range of 3XS PCs by heading to the website scan.co.uk forward slash 3XS. And from there, you can shop by use and then by specs or features. Or if you know which NVIDIA GPU you want, then you can use our site to configure your own.